Have you ever wanted to get that authentic film look without actually having to shoot film? Well, today I'm going to be showing you possibly the best way to do that. My name is It Is Will and this is Dehancer. It's a plugin for your photo editing softwares built with all sorts of features that let us get to our desired film look. I've only used the software a handful of times, but I'm keen to show you what it does for a newbie like me. Dehancer hasn't sponsored or paid for this video, but have kindly gifted me a license for me to use in exchange for this video that I'm making just to show my honest and personal thoughts on it. And they've also given me a discount code to give to you guys so you can get 10% off if you think this is for you. So stick around to the end of the video if you want that code. In my time experimenting with the enhancer, I found that there's two main methods that give me the results that I like. Also, just an FYI, I'm gonna be demonstrating through Lightroom Classic on Adobe, but Dehancer also has compatibility for Capture One, Affinity Photo, or Photoshop. Here I have a photo that I've just imported into Lightroom, and before we open it up with Dehancer, there's some things that they recommend to do to get the most out of the film profiles. First, you wanna switch your color profile to Adobe Standard, which I've already done. Bring your exposure to minus one, your contrast to minus 40, your blacks to plus 60, and just make sure there's no sharpening or any denoising. That will leave you with a photo that looks a little bit more flat, but this is just a good base to use for the film profiles. And a sneaky tip, I'd recommend to save these base settings as a preset, which I've done here on the left, so I can just go ahead and apply it to any photo. Now all we're gonna do is right click on our photo and go edit in and edit in Dehancer Lightroom plugin. You wanna make sure all the settings are in line with these on the screen now. And when we click edit, it's gonna turn this photo into a TIFF file and make a duplication of the photo. And here we go. I'll just run you through the interface really quickly. So on the left here, we have our film profiles. Obviously, if we enable this, it's gonna affect the photo. I haven't even looked at all of them, but there's definitely plenty to look at. On the right side is all the sliders so we can adjust the film and pretty much adjust anything that we like in the photo. If you scroll down, you get to the exciting things that I personally like, which is the grain, the halation, and the bloom. At the top here, you can actually save presets, which is what this tab is for. I haven't saved any presets, but as you can see, it has a previous edit that I did. This would be very handy for batch editing or just editing multiple photos. Then at the top here, you have things like the undo button and a zoom in button and also a preview button so you can see what you've done with the photo. Now, because we've set up our photo with a good base, first, I wanna go to the film profiles and choose a film. There was one that I did see that looked really nice with this photo, and I think it was way further down here. Um, here we go, this one here. Oh, I think that just looks so nice. I mean, to be honest, that looks pretty good to me just with one click, so I don't have to adjust too much, but if you did want to, on the right side, the sliders are, you can adjust all sorts of things with the colors and exposure of the film. Want to add some more contrast into here or leave it out a little bit, I could do that. For example, I think I might want to bring the white point up a little bit in this expand tab. And there we go, we can see our white's coming a little bit more to life there, and I think that looks a little bit better. There's so many things to change here. Most of these are to do with the exposure at the top and your basic temperature and tint sort of sliders here. I think I want to boost the colors a little bit here, so I'm gonna to go to the color boost slider and just drag that up a little bit. There we go. If you keep scrolling, it goes a bit more in depth into colors and you can even choose the paper or the print that the film would theoretically print onto, which is kind of crazy. I personally haven't shot film ever, so I don't know what this means, but that's the convenience of having this app. You can see that changes the different looks of the photo, but I think I'm just gonna stick to the glossy paper. The color head tab makes some pretty strong color adjustments with different hues. So this is yellow or blue. You slide it to the yellow side, it goes yellow. Slide to the blue side, it goes blue. You can obviously experiment a lot with these, but I'm pretty satisfied with the film profile still. So I think I'm just gonna stick pretty much to that. Now getting into the fun stuff, we have film grain. And if I enable that, you can see there's instantly grain applied to the photo. And this is what I like about the answer is that there's literally so much you can adjust to make a photo look exactly how you want especially in terms of film, obviously. As you can see, there's seven different sliders just for grain, so there's plenty to experiment. You can adjust the size here, the amount of grain in the photo, the resolution, and one thing that Lightroom especially doesn't have is color grain, which is something that does naturally occur in film. So if I drag it down, it's gonna be less saturated grain. If we drag it up, there's gonna be a lot more color in the grain, as you can see when I zoom in. You can even adjust the amount of grain in certain areas like the shadows or highlights. I think I'm going to bring that down a little bit, bring the size up. And I think I'm happy with something like that. And it can even go into the different types of film, so positive or negative. Then if we keep scrolling, we get to this tab, which has been very popular over the last year or so, which is halation. And this is that red sort of fringing that you see on the highlights of photos or videos. Because this photo isn't too contrasty and doesn't have too many bright points, it's not as obvious. But if I zoom in here, you should be able to see a little bit of red fringing when I 
turn that off and on, especially around the shirt here. I'd probably bring it down just a little bit, so I might bring the amplify down and the impact, and this will just make it a little bit more subtle. Keep scrolling and we get to bloom, and as its name says, this blooms out all the light and especially the highlights. I think this is super useful, especially if you forgot to use a mist filter in a certain shot, and uh, yeah, you can pretty much replicate it here in Dehancer. Once again, we can adjust pretty much every aspect of the bloom. I'm probably just gonna bring it down a little bit and bring that amplify down, but to be honest, that looks pretty good to me. You can see the before and after we tick the preview. There we go. Looks amazing. Once you're happy with all your changes, all you do is click OK on the top right. And as you can see, we now have our completed photo here in Lightroom as a TIFF file. And now you can pretty much go ahead and export that as normal. Now, this method is great if you don't want to change your workflow too much on Lightroom, or maybe you've already created some film presets that you already like on Lightroom, and you just want to add that little polishing touch to it. I myself already have presets that I've made on Lightroom that look like film that I like, and they're actually available in my 30 pack that I'll link in the description below. But if you're like me and you want to get those final touches that just polish off the film look, then try this method. So I have a photo here that I've already made changes to, as you can see in Lightroom and I already really like the look of it, but what I think it needs is the halation, some grain, and maybe some blue. So even though I have all these edits made to this photo, we can still go ahead and open Dehancer and continue from there. Once again, we have our film profiles here, and some of them actually <laughs> attempting me to use them, which is not what I was meant to do, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the film profiles at the top left here, but make sure to reset all the sliders because they do continue from your last photo edit. So I'm gonna enable the grain first, maybe zoom in a little bit here so we can see, and I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. Let's remove a little bit of color from there and increase the amount. I'm gonna take away more of the grain in the highlights and leave more in the, the shadows and the mid-tones. I think that looks good. So I'm gonna go to halation now. Oh, whew. And instantly you can see on the lights, I'm just gonna zoom in here so you can see a little bit better, but we have that red halation going around the highlights here. I think I might want to diffuse it a bit better. So if I go to global diffusion, you can see this blows out the red a little bit more. And I'm just going to bring the effect down just a little bit so it's not so saturated. And maybe counter the impact by amplifying it a bit. There we go. That's just like a cherry on top for me. Keep scrolling, we can go to bloom. And this is going to bloom our highlights. And I don't really want to do this too much, so I'm just going to bring the impact down really low. And I might even bring the source limiter down. And I think that's just right. So I'm going to go click OK. And now we have our photo with the grain, halation, and bloom, which is exactly what I wanted. I can even go into Lightroom again and make some further changes on this, which just shows how versatile this software is. Don't think that I forgot about all of you that edit on the phone. Luckily, Dehancer has an iOS app that pretty much has all the same features as the desktop version. And it also lets you edit photo and video in the same app. I'll give you a quick rundown of what to expect in this app. Let me just scoot this way a bit so you can See the screen here. So this is what you see when you first open the app and let's go ahead and just select the photo. And don't worry, the watermark is in here forever. It's just because I haven't subscribed yet. So as you can see, we have presets here, which are different profiles with added grain and halation. And these are either made by the Dehancer team or custom by you. So you can go ahead and click on a random one here. And let's say we click on sign still 800T. We can straight away see the halation that's usually on this film. Like the desktop app, you can go into edit and you can see all your sliders here that you could adjust and change the different tabs at the bottom. You can change the different film stocks again if you want and pretty much everything else that has been on the desktop. So it's actually quite in depth for an iOS app especially. And it doesn't really have any restrictions at all when using this. I think this is definitely beneficial if you don't want to edit on a computer or you don't even have a computer, then you can always just run and gun with the phone. A situation where I'd be using this is if I'm traveling or I don't have time to open up my laptop and edit properly. As for room for improvement, Dehancer is definitely easy to use, but I'd say it'd be a bit hard to edit a batch of photos, especially if you have a lot that you have to get to a client in a certain amount of time. It's a little bit more of a detailed process that you have to go through when you're editing these photos. But if you don't mind taking the time like it is when you're actually developing film, then there's no stress. Depending on your budget, it could be quite pricey upfront. However, the benefit of this is, is that you can get a lifetime subscription, which means you know, no more monthly payments. This will last you forever and you can actually get the updates every time they try to improve the app, which is awesome. And as I did mention before, I do have a 10% discount code, which I'll put up here. And one last final critique that I have is I wish the Command Z worked with this app. I don't know about you guys, but I'm always spamming Command Z to undo my changes. That's a really minor fix though. 
Overall, I think Dehancer is ahead of the game with film emulations, and I'm actually surprised Lightroom hasn't tried to copy or at least take notes from Dehancer in terms of bloom, halation, or just more complex grain. 100% recommend if you want to get as close as you can to the film look on your photos. And once again, thank you to the Dehancer team for providing me the software to use for this video. Enjoy.